Amen, amen, amen. But once more and again, want to thank you so much uh, for tuning in. I see everybody coming on. Amen. All right, Sister Shay. I see folks tuning in and coming on live. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. Great to see you. Great to see you. I see the members online and the friends. Amen. Thank you so much. I know some of you guys are probably still hanging around from that powerful word that my wonderful, lovely wife shared earlier. Uh, regarding uh, regarding uh, my my new boo thing, Amen, Amen. Some of y'all heard her message, and, and and she brought up, of course, the new addition to our family. Uh, his name is Max, Amen. And you'll hear more about Max later, Amen, Amen. Good to see you, Sister Simpson, all the way from Jamaica, Amen. God bless you, sis. Glad you're tuning in today, Amen, Amen. Glad you're tuning in, Amen, Amen, Amen. Thank you, thank you. Hallelujah. Well, well, I want to go ahead and kick this off, of course. Once again, I know you're enjoying um, enjoyed earlier today. My lovely wife had a powerful word. Um, this is not a, con a continuation of that, but I do want to challenge you to go and to look at that on, on our website, of course, on the, uh, on the Remit page, as well as, of course, on the God's Pastor Girl page. I want to also encourage you to go to and listen to the message that was ministered. Um, the message is that were ministered this past Sunday um, by way, of course, the, uh, the faith class, the finance class, and also, of course, the marriage class. Some good word, a lot of, a lot of wonderful things being said and a lot of information uh, to help you in, in the area of faith, finances, and, of course, your family. In fact, uh, I ministered a word also um, on God is repairing relationships. And amen. So I don't know if anybody had any relationship repairing this week. Um, I was I was given a testimony. Well, I guess uh, I guess pretty much somebody sharing. Uh, a good friend of mine, uh, he and his wife had uh, divorced some some years ago, a long time ago, and they both had, had got married to someone else. Um, but what has happened now is that um, they don't get together, mm -hmm. and, and and you know I, I guess I don't know what happened between them and them, but mm -hmm. uh, now uh, now he proposed again and she accepted again. And, mm -hmm. And they getting back married again. Amen. Amen. God is fixing relationships. He's fixing marriages. This is it's a it's a I gotta I gotta share this, but ladies and gentlemen, even as much intercessory prayer goes on around here, prayer is so necessary. It's so needed. It's the cornerstone to all of our Christian endeavors. But also, uh, after you prayed a while, sometimes you need to get some counseling. See, see, one thing you can't substitute prayer for is information. And, and sometimes it's a matter. You're not blowing on. I don't know. Sometimes it's a matter. <laughs> sometimes it's a matter of, of getting some counseling and talking some things out. Um, you know, you know, we, you know, we, we spend our time, Amen, uh, praying um, that God would talk to our mates about something or our family about something. When all the while God is saying, No, I'm giving you the boldness for you to say something. And I put in front of you people, um, believe it or not, my wife and I, we've been married. In fact, uh, I know we have the church, uh, we have a pastor's appreciation this week. Um, but, but this coming uh, next week, amen, next week, we'll be celebrating 36 years of marriage. Amen. We've been married 36 years. And, and, and you know, so believe it or not, we know a little bit. We, we know a little bit about uh, about staying married. You, you know, hey, we do weddings, but we do marriage better. Amen. 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 So, so at any rate, you know, and, and also let me, well, anyhow, I don't want to get off on that. So, uh, so yeah, I want to just challenge you. God is moving by his spirit. Amen. 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 So, so, so the church needs to learn. In fact, God uses our personal relationships to make us more relational. See, when I, watch this. When I get to where I can talk to and communicate openly um, to my wife, to my spouse, it helps me to be a to be a better communicator on my job. It's going to enhance my, my my communicable skills as I go into the workforce, as I go into the seven mountains. You see, you, you see, family is necessary for fine tuning, especially in ministry. In fact, the very problem that you have with your family is probably the message that God has given you to minister to the masses. Amen, amen. And, and, and so God will use family to fine tune us for the sake of ministry. 
You know, because once again, if my wife can't understand what I'm saying, it's not of me getting louder. It's a matter of me finding another way to say it. You know, and watch this, and finding a way that, that, that I can communicate it to her without offending her and running her away. Right. In fact, the goal of marriage, believe it or not, amen, this time it, it's found in Ephesians. Don't turn them, but the goal in marriage, one of the goals in marriage is found in Ephesians chapter 4. And that is that we get to where we speak the truth in love. That, that, that we can that we can be hurt by something you did or didn't do. But we can tell you truth after we don't simmer down, after we don't check ourselves, after we don't pray about it. Then we can go, okay, Lord, well, let me mention it in because they still doing it. And if they still doing it and you ain't said nothing, you can't get, you can't complain about what you allow. You, 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 you can't leave somebody over something that they never knew. Amen. All right, all right, all right. Amen. Just, okay. yes, so, so then how? Um, anyhow, so open your Bibles. Yes, sir. We're going to continue today. I only got a little bit of time. We're going to continue today on the subject of how to endure hardness. How to endure hardness. Amen. Amen. Um, and I want to pick up here in Hebrews. Yes, sir. We're going to do Hebrews chapter 10. And uh, we're going to do out of the easier reader version. I feel like the easy reader version is going to help us to move along more briskly. And hopefully it may keep me from taking rabbit trails, amen. But, but notice when I take the rabbit trail, it's because God done, 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 done led me or something like that, amen. I try to, I, I make sure I pray before I minister. And I, I do my best to be open to whatever he wants to say, amen, amen. Hebrews chapter 10, and we'll be, just 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 three different passages of scripture tonight. Um, we're going to talk about, of course, part three of how to endure hardness, amen with emphasis on the word endure, amen. In fact, the title of this lesson, amen, part three would be this, amen. It's kind of co kind of coincides with what I just got to talking about is make sure that your suffering is not self-inflicted. You, you got to make sure Whatever you're going through, whatever you're dealing with that's negative, whatever negative situation or circumstance that you're going through, we're going to talk about this. Make sure that you're not the one. Yes, sir. Make sure that it's not a self-inflicted wound. Make sure that it's not some things that you're doing that's sabotaging your own success. And when I, success, I'm not, I'm, when I say success, I'm not referring to just a bundle of money. I'm not referring to just things. I'm referring to success. In fact, uh, here at Remnant Church, uh, the meaning of success is that I've found or I've discovered and I'm doing God's will for my life. Success is not based on what car I drive. It's not based on what neighborhood or no neighborhood I live in. It's not based upon what kind of suit I wear or what kind of clothes I got or how much money is in the bank. Ladies and gentlemen, real God-given, real godless success is based upon did I and have I and am I in the in the vein of completing God's purpose and will for my life? Because if I'm supposed to be doing one thing for God and I'm doing something else, how many of you know that, 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 in fact, Joshua said, obey the scripture, obey the word of God so you can have good success. And the fact that Joshua mentions good success, that means that there's a, such a thing as bad success. And bad success is when you spend all your time working on something that you wanted to do and then find out it's not the thing that God told you to do. Somebody, I, I think I heard Joyce Meyer say this. It, it, it's a frustrating thing, um, a, very exasperating, to, to work all your life climbing up a, a corporate ladder, only to get to the top of the ladder and find out that it was attached to the wrong building. <laughs> to find out you were suffering, going through, fighting and dealing with folk that you want to go be dealing with it in the first place, which is the reason why we probably suffer in the uh, in the course of it. Amen. All right. So let's let's go Hebrews chapter ten. So we got to make sure that 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 our suffering is not self inflicted. Hebrews chapter ten and verse number thirty five. Amen. Hebrews ten verse thirty five, and I'm going to read uh, verse thirty five and thirty eight. And this is the easy reader version, so it may sound different than your King James. It says, 
So don't lose the courage that you had in the past. Your courage will be rewarded richly. You must be patient. After you have done what God wants, you will, you will get what he promised you. Uh, and, and I think I preached a message on that a while back, that, 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 that after, after you do what God wants, you get his will. Amen. That happened, but that happened. If you done what he say, you get when he, he said you will get what's promised you. He says, verse thirty-seven. He says, very soon now, the one who is coming will come and will not be late. The person who is right with me, who lives, who who will live by trusting in me, but I will not be pleased with with one that turns back in fear. The emphasis, of course, is verse number thirty-six. He says, of course, that you must be patient that after you've done the will of God. Now remember, the patience kicks in after I've done the will of God. I, I've heard this explained before earlier this week about if, if, if I haven't done the will of God, I can't have patience yet. In fact, I can't even begin to endure if I'm not in his will. Because patience kicks in, the grace that's associated with patience, the faith that's tied to patience kicks in as the Bible says, after I've done his will. In fact, y'all yeah, know this, even faith itself cannot be applied until the will of God is known. So until I know what God is saying, I can't do what God said. And until I do what God said, God can't release what he said. Amen. That makes sense? Yeah. So, so, so I got to understand that the, that the key to endurance, which is synonymous with patience, comes after. It comes after I've done the will of God. After I do God's will, then I can wait patiently. In fact, it's a very tormenting thing to try to wait on God after you haven't done his will. There are some people that know the will of God and still haven't stepped out, which is why there's no faith. For they wait on God to move something. They wait on God to change something. They wait on God to set something up. And all the while, God's going, I'm going to do that, but I can't do that until after you have done the wheel. So, so, so we got to understand that, that patience, uh, yes, sir, patience, uh, grace, faith, the, the juice needed to do God's will is only released after I've done God's will. So what that means? That means do your best and then let God do the rest. I got to ask you a question. I, I got to be preaching today, but I'm trying to be calm, but I got to ask you a question. You can't rest if you haven't done God's best. See, true patience and faith, true resting, true waiting comes when you know that you know that you know you've done what God said do. Yeah. Because until you've done what God said do, there ain't no real rest in you. Ain't no real peace in you. In fact, I'll be, I'll be frank with you. Um, I, I, know, I know Max has that revelation. He hasn't been in that house for one day yet. I know my kids, my wife. Um, it, it's something about, yes, sir. It's something about, when you know somebody else has the responsibility, mm -hmm. you rest. Mm -hmm. I, I see Myla sitting there having a good time as she always is. <laughs> and because she ain't got a word. The only thing on Myla mind, it, it may be uh, uh, her lunch by her lunch for tomorrow, you know, or, 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 or what she's going to look at on TV. She said, why? Because now, now watch this. She lives in the house. She has all kinds of necessities, but she's resting because she knows that her mother and father is responsible. And ladies and gentlemen, when you know that you have done your best, when you know that you have exasperated and you've done everything that God told you to do, then you can rest on what God says to do. Amen. amen. Can I move on? Amen. Turn with me to, to Psalms. Amen. 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 Psalms 119. Amen. I got some pillars in here tonight. Now, a lot of people understand. See, people think that preaching, that the, that the gift of preaching uh, comes uh, from the preacher. No, ladies and gentlemen, it comes from the pews. It comes from the people pulling. Uh, preachers preach according to what the pews pull on. And when people pull on the preacher, they get a word. But when people are not hungry, then the preacher don't preach. Amen. Y'all must be hungry out there. In fact, I, 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 I see you out there. I see you out there carrying Matt back again. Amen, 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 amen. Now watch this. Remember what we're talking about. We're talking about making sure that your suffering is not self-inflicted. Let's see. What I told you to go to? Psalms 119, now watch this, yes sir. Psalms 119, mm -hmm. 
And I'm going to read this, sir. Man, for the sake of time, as much as I want to go with some other things. Well, no, I'm going to read the whole, I'm going to read the Psalms, Psalms 119, I'm going to read verse 68 through 72. You ready? Now watch this. And this is the word, and I'm giving you scripture on everything. 68 says, you are good, talking about God. You are good, and you do good things. Teach me your laws. Now remember, there's all, before God gives a blessing, there's always a lesson. Yeah, remember that? There's always a lesson involved with every blessing. And the lesson should be a life lesson, one that we can incorporate for life from here to eternity. In fact, if it's a life lesson, then it becomes a building block for our character, and also it propels us into our purpose. Because when God gives us a lesson, that lesson is directly tied to the purpose and the destiny for our lives. See, some people are trying to go to yeah, I got me going. Some people trying to go to Bible school to, to, to learn this and learn that. And that's good. I've been to Bible school, taught Bible school. All that's good, been there, done that, highly recommended. But watch this. But for your destiny and purpose, and, and there may be for some that are in a different different profession, get your, the, the, the certification to go to college, so on and so forth. Don't, don't misunderstand me on this. But understand this. Whatever your destiny is, especially if you're a preacher, God's training for you is not just in the different studies you do in terms of schools and colleges and universities. He will allow you, hear me now, he will allow you to go to, to, go to Holy Ghost University, which is a school better known as Hard Knocks, that will teach you lesson after lesson after lesson that at the end of the course you will graduate in your destiny. I'm trying to help somebody, Lord. I'm trying to help somebody, Lord. And now, now go to school. Learn, learn the Greek and the Hebrew, all that good. But, but keep in mind now, keep in mind, knowledge knowledge unapplied is nothing. And, 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 and you got to make sure, like, the lady, like I said earlier, that your ladder is hitched to the right building. Amen. And, and, if you, and if you surrender to God daily, if you every day ask God what you want me to do, he will make sure that you're in your life at the right place. Amen. Amen. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I, I, I don't know. I don't know. I, don't, I just sense that there's some that, that there's some holy, holy ghost university students in the mix. I, I, I don't know. I don't know. I'm going to just go out on them. And, and I think that some people have already got some certificates from the school of hard knocks. I don't know. Maybe maybe I'm going to them. Maybe somebody's in the class right now. Amen. Amen. That, 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 that's learning some lessons from life from the school of hard knocks. And the beauty of lessons from life, the, the, the lessons that you learn from the school of hard knocks are lessons that help you go through hard without getting hardened. Yes, sir. It, it helps you go through rough times without getting rough. Hey, 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 it'll get to where, it'll get to where folk would think you don't stop going through what you went through because you don't look like you're going through what you're going through. Come on. I can't say that again. But, but, but it, 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 you get to where folk will forget they saw your name on They forget you say. They will forget everything. They will forget all the hard, all the bad stuff you're going to be going through because you don't look like what you're going through. Why? Because you are going through the school of hard knocks. And, and, and yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. And God don't and God don't put you in there. No, no, no. He don't send the problems, but he allow it, knowing that it's going to produce a great work of patience and favor and strength in your life. I better read this Bible and let this Bible talk. Are y'all looking at me? Let me read this scripture. And y'all start asking questions. Just y'all put me in the night, ain't you? Okay, watch this. Psalm 119 and 68. Now go to school now. now once again, now, I went to Arkansas about the scholars. Amen. Amen. I have an honorary doctorate from Harvest Bible. I'm I'm one of the alumni of Harvest Bible University. You know, I, I mean, and, and I've taught, I've taught Bible classes and I've taught, I mean, and all that. Highly recommend them. Amen. Study to show that separate food. A workman that need not be a shit. Rightly dividing the word. Now watch this. But ladies and gentlemen, it's not the word you know, it's the word you live. Amen. And the word you live is the word that you apply every day at your house. Okay. See, see, yes sir, yes sir. See, yes sir, yes sir. See, you can have a degree and get the respect of man, uh -huh. or you can obey God and get the respect of the devil. You can have an audience with God, his angels, and watch the devil flee, or you can impress me and other people with no power at all. True authority and genuine calling comes through going through daily what God has you to go through in order for you to walk out and become the real person who is the real you. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. I got to go on. Y'all pulling tonight. All right, man. You must start something. Watch this. Let me read this verse 68. You are good, talking about God. You are good and you do good things. Teach me your laws. Look at, look at verse 69. People full of pride made up lies about me. But I keep obeying your instructions. 
with all my heart. Well, that's a let that I, I want to go further now, but that's not the lesson. Amen. But well, watch this. That's verse 70. Those people are so stupid. Now I'm reading the Bible. Somebody yeah. said, he reading the Bible. Reading all the Bible. right, I, I don't know about that. I'm reading the Bible. He, he, he said, those people are so stupid that they care for nothing. But I enjoy, look, studying your teachings. Amen. See, at different going to class and reading about them, hearing about them, and you go, see, watch this. Classes you do at school. Studying and learning God is what you do at your home. See, it's where your Bible sits when you're not at the church. Okay, all right, let me, let me read on. Let me watch this. Let me leave that alone. Now watch this. Look, 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 verse 71. Suffering was good for me. I learned your laws. Your teachings are worth more to me than a thousand pieces of silver. So, as I've said before, that's why, that's why we got to understand that before the blessing, there's always a lesson. And even now, we've said it before and we'll say it again tonight, that it'd be a shame, amen, it'd be a shame for us to go through this whole eight months of COVID-19 pandemic and we're none the better. It'd be a shame that I had the same personality that I had in March 2020, uh, that I had the same personality, the same hangups, the same, the same mess, that my heart still jacked up. And I still got some ugly ways. Amen. Amen. And I still got some ugly ways in, 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 in October 2020 that I had in March 2020. In fact, truth be told, the reason why, the reason why we're still going through what we're going through, and the reason why it seems like it ain't, it seems like it ain't lit up yet, because we ain't done yet. Mm -hmm. And tell your neighbor, the cake ain't ready. Amen. We ain't done yet. We just look good. Uh -huh. No, yeah, we look good, smelling good, but we ain't done yet. Amen. Amen. Okay, we got to learn that one. Okay, we got to learn the lesson. I ain't preaching this week, so I'm kind of, Amen. We got to learn the lesson in this. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, so, so notice it. Notice it. He says in verse 70, 71, Lord, your suffering was good for me because I learned your laws. Because truth be told, the sad reality of human nature is that our intensity is not strong when we're having good times. The truth about human nature is that in many cases, God knows that success is our greatest enemy. God knows that a lot of times after we don't get the blessing, it's when he don't hear us praying as hard as we did. He, he, he knows that, that we don't get up and run after him once we don't get from him what we want. I remember a woman of God preached one of my favorite sermons I heard years ago, back in 1985. I'll never forget it. His name was Patterson. Amen. I found Gail Patterson. And she preached a message down at Greater Trinity over on 14th and Pulaski. And I went there on a Tuesday night and she preached a message called, You got what you want, but you missed what you had. You, you prayed and fasted to get that new thing. But when the new thing came, God didn't see you no more. It, it altered my thinking for the rest. That's 1985, and that message still haunts me daily. That I make sure, Lord, that I don't get what, what I don't get what I want, and then my intensity, my drive, my desire to serve you now wanes. Now I put you on the back burner instead of the front burner, because I don't replace I don't replace the blesser with a blessing. Amen. Amen. Y'all love me. Amen. Amen. And so, so suffering, amen. So, so God uses suffering. I mean, God uses suffering. He don't send it, but he uses it. He uses suffering because, yes, sir. Yes, sir. I say that. He uses suffering to teach us lessons because in the class of life, in the, in the, in the Holy Ghost University, in most cases, left to ourselves, this is no mark because I know we got social distancing going on, by the way. But, but if left to ourselves, we would go to the classroom of Holy Spirit University and we would sit in the back row and we would half study and we would not apply half of what's being said. But God knows that mankind is such that, that when he has the hard knocks class as part of the curriculum for us, for us learning God's destiny and plan for our life, that, that, we'll, that we'll find ourselves seated on the front row, leaning in and taking notes and ready to write and do what God is saying. He, he knows that, that we are more prone, we are more prone to receive when we are leaning in. So watch this, go with me to the next one. Go to me, go with me to Psalms 139, my last scripture. See, I think it ain't gonna be long. Psalms 139, is the best man anybody? Amen. Amen. See, see, God trying to teach you a lesson. See, the, watch this, 
In fact, and, and I've said it before, and I, you know, I tell my father time, whenever you see a storm coming or you are experiencing a storm, the first thing you should do is ask God, Lord, now what is the lesson in this? What am I supposed to learn? Now, Lord, you allowed this. Keep in mind, now turn to it, but 1 Corinthians 10, 13 says that, said that, said that, said that, that all suffering is common to man. But that God, now hear me now, that God would not allow you to be suffering or go through above what you are able to bear. That, that, that he would not let you go through anything that you can't overcome. Because God knows you better than you, God knows us better than we know ourselves. He knows that we can deal with more than we can deal with. We just, we just cut off at the point of being uncomfortable. But God knows that it's past the point of being uncomfortable that you have to get your certification. It's past the point of being uncomfortable that the Holy Spirit actually kicks in. And now all of a sudden grace shows up. And now you are learning lessons by going through something that you otherwise would not have gotten. Amen. And all the while, watch this. And all the while, the great teacher, the Holy Spirit, is in control. And all the while, while you're taking the test and going through the trial, and all the while, while you're going through what you're going through, it's an open book test. And all the while, the open book test that you're reading, the one you have in your lap, the one that you're holding in your hand as a cell phone, all the while, it, inc it includes, amen, the answers, it includes 2 yes, it includes uh, Second Corinthians 2.14. That in all things you always win. All the while, God sees you as a winner before you go through, while you're in the middle, and before you come out. That's why while you're crying, God's smiling. That's why when you pray and you're hollering, God is cool. That's why while you're panicking, God is being patient. Why? Because God knows the outcome and what he is, what he is aiming for, what he is desiring, and he didn't send it, but what he is desiring to be a fruit to be to be revealed as you go through is that a burden that, that that there's a better version of you on the other side of that that you are a more fruitful person in terms of the fruits of the spirit that you're a little more kinder a little more gentler a little more easy get a little more a little more soft in heart than you were before you went in amen amen psalms yes sir hit that last one yes sir yes sir yes sir psalms 139 Amen. This is the best thing about it? Amen. Because in, in most cases, once again, begin to do this. Ask God, why am I going through what I'm going through? What is the lesson? Watch this. Hear me now. Stop so much praying for the answer to the problem. Pray for the lesson before you receive the breakthrough. Hear me now. See, see let your desire be more so in what I'm supposed to learn rather than in me going on and doing my thing. Psalms one, Psalm 139, verse 24. Now watch this. It's a bold prayer while the music is playing, while the backdrop is playing. Amen, amen. Now, now watch this. It's a bold prayer. But watch this. Watch this. Psalm 1, I love this. And I see this as a prayer. Watch this. Psalm 139 and verse 23. God, examine me and know my mind. Test me and know all my worries. Make sure that I'm not going the wrong way. Lead me on the path that has always been right. Amen. You see that? See, 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 you want to go lower? Examine me. Make sure, yes, sir. Watch this. Make sure that as I'm going through this hard time, make sure that while I am enduring, this time of trial and suffering that it's not self-inflicted. Just give me music. It's not self inflicted No words, just music. That, that, that is not self-inflicted, but that is actually, no words. That is not self-inflicted, but that is actually pride. That is not pride, but that I'm developing meekness. See, make sure it's not your pride and that you're not owning the problem, willing to deal with the problem, that the problem persists. Amen. Because God, remember we opened up with this, God is trying, God wants us to develop the characteristic of meekness. And meekness, amen, is, is strength and power under control. It, it's me withholding my ability or my, or, or my yes sir, or my, or my, or my, justi my justification to do something, to do something hard or, or to be, yes sir, or to judge somebody and instead love them and extend kindness. Amen. And it's also an admittance 
to my need for God. Make sure your pride is not your problem. M make sure, make sure that is not unforgiveness. Make sure that is not unforgiveness. But make sure that unforgiveness, amen, that you got freedom from unforgiveness. Make sure unforgiveness is not the thing that's causing the healing, that's causing your peace, that's causing your joy, amen. The, the, the opposite of unforgiveness, the opposite of unforgiveness, the opposite, the opposite of unforgiveness, amen, thank y'all, thank you. The opposite of unforgiveness is, watch this, you know that if unforgiveness is there because it robs you of peace. Unfor when you have an unforgiving heart, it's hard to smile when you're alone. When, when unforgiveness is in, you can pray and say and do the right things. But you know what? There's no real peace in your soul, in your belly. So you got to make sure that your suffering in your soul is not because you're holding somebody hostage. And I said it before and I bear saying it again. Make sure you don't have nobody jailed up in your heart. Amen. Make sure you don't have nobody incarcerated in your mind. And that you're holding them prison, because what happens that robs you of your peace. Make sure, yes, sir. Make sure that you're not trying to force your will over God's will. Make sure that you're not trying to make something happen in spite of what God said not to do. There's an old saying, in fact, it's in the Bible, that if you want to make God laugh, Amen. Tell them your plans. Tell them what you're going to do. Tell them, tell them that you got it. Amen. And when you do that, God will laugh. Why? Because God knows all, sees all, and he knows that his timing is perfect and that he's always right, that he always knows everything. And, 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 and if God is not opening the door, stop kicking it. Oh, hear me now. If God ain't turned the knob, then just turn away. Amen. If God ain't open the door, stop looking around for windows. Wait in the hallway and get the lesson and let God allow the door to open for your next blessing. Amen. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Stop fighting. Begin to rest. Begin to allow patience to have this perfect work. Begin to allow patience to, to work in you. Watch this. Begin to allow patience in trusting God's timing. In trusting God's provision, in trusting God to do what He says He's going to do, so much that you allow patience to give you a peace, to purify your heart, to remove all impurities of selfish ambition. Of, of I'm gonna do this because I'm gonna show them that I'm that. All that goes out the window. God is waiting on that to go before He shows up. So today I say this to you: Make sure that in your suffering, make sure that. As you are going through hard times, make sure that as you're going through Holy Spirit University, that your that 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 that, that your wounds are not self-inflicted, that you are are not. It's not so much the devil fighting you, but you're fighting against God because you haven't yielded. Thank you, because you haven't yielded to His presence and to His Spirit. If that bless you today, will you shout hallelujah? Hallelujah, hallelujah. hallelujah. Want to thank God for you staying tuned. And also, of course, want to encourage you to go ahead and, and, and get ready to give. Amen. Amen. You can, of course, give through Give Life at Remnant Church Little Rock. I think at one point we had some problems with that particular uh, outlet, but that has been resolved. There's some going on, but then, nonetheless, feel free to use Give Life It. Amen. Also want to, want to encourage you to use the PayPal. Amen. The PayPal, Remnant Church, Little Rock, at yahoo.com. Also, Cash App. Yes, sir, I'll mention that. Also, Cash App. Yes, sir. Cash App at, at a, a dollar sign, Remnant C. Amen, for the Cash App. And also, you can mail it to our address here at Remnant Church at 11715 Rainwood Road, Little Rock, Arkansas, 72212. Amen. And feel free to come to one of our services. In fact, this week we're promising a powerful time in the Lord. We're going to have none other than Pastor G here to bless us as we celebrate our nine-year anniversary. Amen, amen, amen. Our nine-year appreciation. I'm sorry, it's pastor's appreciation. So it's appreciation for pastors. And by the way, if you want to bless my lovely wife, Pastor Robin, dollar sign, Robin Wynn. Amen, because she's fine as wine in the summertime. And, and I, don't, I don't know, I think mine is some, mine dollar sign, Victor Wynn won, I think. Amen. So anyhow, if you want to bless us directly, feel free to do that. And, and see, hey, we do need blessings too. You folks don't realize we go through like you go through. This word that I that I share and give, man, we deal with stuff all the time. You know, amen. So 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 we thank you for your prayers. 
And thank you, Father. Thank you guys for, for showing up. Now I want you to stand up as we get ready to pray. Amen. I want to encourage you, of course. Let's see. I think this weekend, this Saturday at 9 o'clock, intercessory prayer meeting. Amen. I want to invite everybody to come out, all the intercessors to be here. We're going to meet at the Life Center at 9 o'clock. Also, of course, there will be no uh, no kingdom classes, no uh, no Sunday school on this coming Sunday morning. So therefore, you'll tune in at 10 o'clock instead of the regular 9 o'clock time. There'll be no Sunday school, but we're going to start services promptly at 10 o'clock. Amen. So make sure you tune in then. Is there anything else I should, should recognize? November the 21st, we got our singles meeting. Amen. Uh, for relationships, come on out for that. Radio broadcast. Uh, hot and heavy. We'll be dealing with part three. Uh, how do we gain your faith uh, on next Tuesday at 12 o'clock? Pastor Robin, of course, is going to be on God's Pastor Girl again on next Wednesday. And also, of course, a lot of wonderful people in here, a lot of ministers in here, got programs with different things going on. So, hey, now when you see one of our preachers and one of our, our, our members doing something, we we are for them. We 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 are we are behind them, Amen. Understand that this church, our purpose, Amen, is to coach people into their greatness. My job is to help people to find what they're called to do and help them to get there, Amen. So so I get enough joy in, in, from the background. That's why even tonight, you know, I, I just want to chill, sit in the back and listen to some testimonies, Amen. But but my job is to coach you into your greatness. So here, of course. Uh, of course, what we do is get behind our ministers. So when they do the, the little lives and the, and the little things here and there, and when they're on Facebook, we support them. You see, we share, we tap, but we love them and we support them because we know that we all on the same team, and that is kingdom. That is the kingdom of God. We all on team KG. It just so happens that the team colors for the kingdom of God is burgundy and, 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 and black, and, and, and that the headquarters for the kingdom of God is having to be at 117. One five rainbow. Amen. So anyhow, with that being said, God bless you. Thank you so much. Let me let me bless you right now, Father, in the name of Jesus. I pray, Father God, that the word, of course, did fall on. And in fact, I sense that it did fall on ears and hearts that were ready to receive. Yes, sir. And Lord, I pray right now. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I will. I pray right now that that person. Just like Paul was kicking against the prick. That was trying to do something. Trying to serve you without you. Trying to do church without God's help. Trying to preach and teach without God giving the word. Trying to work for God without God working with them. Yes, sir, I hear that. In the name of Jesus right now. Yes, sir, I thank you, Lord. That you're setting their hearts and mind at ease that they will no longer resist your will. That even though, even as their hands are lifted up, even here publicly and both there on Facebook now, that even as their hands are lifted up in surrender, but that their hearts now are being laid bare before you, offering no resistance. Lord, I stand before them and with them as well with my hands lifted up. And Father God, if there's any pride or anger, any offense, Lord. If there's any any self-willed and selfish ambition. Lord, if, if, if we're trying to do anything and for our own glory, Lord God, let it not come to pass. Help us to remain fruitful, holy, and loyal to you. Help us to be sensitive to your spirit and to only do your will and to do it your way. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I speak on behalf of these people as I speak for myself. We resist you no more, sir. Yes, sir. We resist you no more. Mm -hmm. But we free our minds and our hearts to serve like never before. We free our hearts and our minds to serve you even through loving people like never before. Lord, in the name of Jesus, we thank you right now thank you. for the gift of patience, grace, peace, joy, and gladness. Freedom, sir, because we're no longer full of ourselves. We're full of you, and we want your will to be done through help us to help our families. 
Help us to leave here helping our sons and our daughters and our neighbors. And help us when we see that we have an answer, that we give it, sir. That we be a solution. Yes, sir, I hear that. Help us to be solution-minded and not so much problem conscious. Help us, sir, to yield to you as you use us to your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you, everyone. God bless you.